Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Thanks for jumping in once again. We're going to be covering some really exciting subject matter tonight with creating your own convincing flares, the lens and the sun flares. So let's dig in. All right, so I wanted to give you a few different examples to work from. I wanted to start with kind of a fairly benign image here, it's okay, of uh, something that has a sun flareish thing going on. We can take it and enhance it and kind of make more of what you've got in this circumstance. Those are typically a little easier to work with because the shadows are already, already established and you're not going to be fighting kind of the surrealistic uh, aspect of things about where a light should be. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. but. Today I just wanted to give you some examples of that. Starting with this, starting with a sun flare, we can add a little bit of lens flare for effect on the way as well. And we'll go through some examples of that and then we'll work on creating one from scratch just so you can see how that works out. Again, I'm not so concerned with shadows and, and the light refraction and reflection. This is just to give you examples of how you could insert this into your own image um, convincingly. <laughs> shadows you'll have to work on separately because that could involve a whole lot of photo alteration and ultimately cloning and drawing out and I have other videos of that uh, which you can look at in the cards if you're watching YouTube or you can go through my YouTube channel and find those and get some examples of that. So looking at uh, this particular example, city shot, a little bit of sun coming over the edge of this building. Let's take that and make it more flare-esque. That's a word. If not, it's my word now. <laughs> So let's get started. I want to get a little bit of background music going here, though, because it's just it's too quiet. Okay. So once again, we are working in paint.net. That is really my tool of choice for now because it's free. You can upload it out on and on and on with plugins that people have created and continue to develop. And it is really just a fantastic piece of photo editing and alteration software, which I continue to be amazed my day after day. Um, there are many different pieces of software out there, whether you use Krita, whether you use uh, DxO or Photoshop or any of those. This one is just, it's free and it does a great job. So this is what I'm working on and this is what I want to share with you. So we're going to take what's there. You can already see there's a little bit of flare effect. There's some very light colors going on in there. So what I'm going to start by doing is actually trying to make those a little more defined. I'm going to dig into curves for a second on a duplicate layer and see if we can just darken this enough so I can see them. You can see they're a little more defined now. And then I'm going to pick something here. Something on the yellow spectrum. Okay, that's all we really need that for. And then I want to make a brand new layer. <clears throat> and really, we're just going to draw right on top of, uh, in a brand new layer, what we want to do here. Okay, so we start with the base color. And I like to work within the palette, um, which I just realized is kind of behind the camera. <laughs> I like to work within the palette of colors that we start from. So I'm going to make this a little smaller, center it up. And ultimately, we're going to be going to get to white. That's really what we're going to be doing here. But I want to use colors that are in the same wash of things. So it's more of a transition. And then we make our way to pure white. And you could really do this any other way. This is just the way I choose to do it. You could start with completely off color and then wash that and work that into the image. Uh, really, this is just kind of a fun thing you can do. But this is the way I generally approach it, just so it can blend it with the image that's already there a little more cleanly. All right, 
So we have three different colors there. You can see them a little easier this way. One, two, three. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into a smudge tool. There's a couple different variants out there uh, that are on the forums for download. I had to put this one on there. This one's by Zach Walker. It works very well. Um, there's another one out there which I stumbled on the other day. I can't recall the name of it right now, but it essentially functions exactly the same. It's just a different name. So, In the smudge tool, I'm going to start with about 50%. And I want to get a brush that's going to give us some pull. I'm going to start in the middle and just drag my way out. And really the trick here to start is you always want to put the brush dead center of everything. And then try to keep it as symmetrical and straight as you can. And you'll notice I'll kind of back out a couple of times because sometimes the movement I do is not quite as smoother straight as I would like and that's gonna happen I'm working on a mouse unfortunately I don't have a digital pen system here and um, sometimes it just takes me a few tries to get my drag correct and it's not something you can really do slowly either it has to be like a, a it has to be <laughs> a quick drag just so it gets the, uh, the pull through all the layers so a couple tries will generally get you to the right spot and then from there if you really want to, you can accent these a bit more. Again, just trying to keep them straight and true to the direction that you set, because it looks really odd if there's like curves in the sun flare that just doesn't look right. <laughs> okay, so that's a good place to start. going to take with that and start working with it. What I will probably do, you know, we have a working start, so I'm going to duplicate it before we do anything else here, in case I got to go back to it. And just try to tweak this up a little bit. So it just looks a little too dark. a little better. Again, I'm going to duplicate it because what I want to do is give it a little bit of glow. What that ends up doing is it ends up being kind of like the aura of the sun. If you were to look at the sun shot, even what you saw before, um, I'll show you this actually as soon as this is done, is that you'd see there's some wash. There's really, it's not clean cut all the way around. You can kind of see how there's some blur going on there. So. We're going to try to mimic the same in our reconstruction here. <clears throat> okay, and then the next step that we're going to do is we're going to get to something called the zoom blur, which is really, really start to kind of build this out a little bit here. If you really wanted to from here also, you could further refine colors. That's good enough for my purposes for now. So that's where I'm going to leave it for now, just again to give you an idea of, of how this works. I'm going to create another duplicate layer just so we have something else to, to stretch out. And I'm going to move into the Zoom Blur tool. Now because this is kind of coming in you know, over the top of the building, that's, that's kind of the direction and the effect I want to do. And just start drawing this out. And it's going to take a few passes with this. To get it just right. What you may also have to do is intensify it because the more you stretch something out, the thinner it gets. <laughs> so I like to use uh, duplicating the layer and then overlaying it again just to try to compound itself even a couple of times. Uh, just to kind of give it that body back. You can see it start to come alive there. I'm going to merge those back together so that I have that as one. There we go. And then I'm going to take the same idea. I'm just going to call 
this flare, or rather, this is multiple types of flares. Sun flare, move this out of the way, and duplicate that. And then we're going to start rotating this so that we can cover the rest of the ground here, rest of the real estate. And I'm not too worried about distortion on this, so if you need to drag it out and do those kinds of things, there's low risk of you losing quality of it by making it bigger because it's already stretched, it's already zoom blurred, so becomes a very versatile and open effect that way. And if you can, you should try to line these up with the flares you've already established because that just helps it to become more believable. Drag this out so we get it off. Okay, so a couple of minor adjustments. Hop into properties here and back off some of these just a little because they're a little intense now. Okay, and then what we want to do Start merging them in from the bottom working our way up because the way paint.net works is that it will always mash together the undergirding foundation first. And if you start working from the top down, that actually changes the circumstances, especially if you're working with overlays, because overlays are dependent on what's underneath it. So mashing from the top down will actually change it as you go down, but if you start from the bottom working your way up, it will maintain what you have designed <laughs> in that regard. And the only reason you'd really want to combine things is if you wanted that ability to adjust that layer altogether. Unfortunately, there's no multi-layer select in pink.net, which is one of its unfortunate shortcomings, but this is how you can combine them and turn it into something else. What I might just do here, just because, turn that into an overlay, and back off its opacity a lot. So you want this to be dreamy. There we go. You could go with dragging it and blurring that some more, but you can get the idea of what's happening here in that we're just we're creating sun flares, sun rays. So that's another way to do this. Um, I'll touch briefly here on this image since we're on it with doing lens flare. That's very simple and very easy, and that's a lot less complicated than what we're doing in this case. Um, so I'll just jump through that once. And that's really, the difference between sun flare and lens flare, just to explain it, uh, sun flare is where the rays of the sun are radiating out and it has kind of like this ray effect that you see, you'll see it as it breaks through clouds and around things. 
Um, I should probably make this a little more realistic and cut these rays back if I wanted to, but um, <clears throat> that's a sun flare. A lens flare is where it's gonna hit the lens and refract off the curvature of the lens or perhaps a speck of dust that got caught on the lens, something like that, um, which can add a neat effect for other things, and I'll do that here. So we have our sun flare. We're gonna put our lens flare on now. And really the way that starts to manifest is, really it's just a series of progressive dots. So we're gonna add a couple selections onto a layer because we only want a couple pieces of it. The way you do that in paint.net um, is I'm gonna start with using the circle selector using or holding down the shift key lets you draw in a perfect uh, arrangement of that shape that you're using. If I were to use a square, it would be the same thing where I could just hold shift and make it a perfect square. I don't want a square in this case, I want a circle. And again, this is a selector, we're not drawing a shape yet. So shift, and then if I want to add to that, adding another selection, I can add control, you see kind of the plus symbol add on to my cursor there, if you can see that. And I'm going to hold shift, so we get both pieces where I'm going to add to my layer and keep it as a perfect shape. Okay. For this, I'm just going to use basic white. Now what you can do from this if you really want to, you can add a gradient across all these while they're still selected. That could be kind of cool. I'm gonna leave my little gray piece selected. Or if you wanted to, you could also get a little fancy, add a blank layer. This is a little hack for paint.net. And as your alternate color, select anywhere in that blank layer. And you'll notice in the palette, which again here, in the palette, if I select anywhere an empty layer, it just makes the color completely transparent. And you may be wondering, well, Nate, what's the good in that? There's no color to fade to. Well, that's exactly it. <laughs> we're making it so that we're only using one color and gradiating out to transparency. So if I use the gradient tool, let me show you what that looks like now. Uh -huh. I think I keep dragging things by accident here. Dragging the wrong thing around with me here. Come on. Maybe it's just not an intense enough color. Oh, it's already white. <laughs> it's back up. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Back to gradient. There we go. Now you can really start to see. The last one isn't completely full because the gradient is partially transparent. I'm going to do that. I'm going to come back in here with a little bit of Gaussian blur. Because again, these refractions are never 100% perfect. you can do to kind of give it a little more buy-in effect, which I found to be really useful, is use the eraser tool and try to get a larger size brush, whatever you can fit around the other bubbles. Turn the hardness way down because we don't want to affect it too much. And then we just want to chip into this a little bit. Back off the transparency a bit more. And there we go. That's basically the idea. 
you can tune that up. It doesn't always have to be three. That's just typically what you'll see as the effect. It could be one or two. But you can simulate the effect that way if you're after that concept in your alterations. So that's one example. Sun flares, lens flares. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. Same thing going on here. Sun, somewhat boring right now. So what I'll actually do with this one is instead of drawing my own on top of it, I'm going to borrow the one that's there. And right now I'm using the freeform selector, which can be a little haphazard, but sometimes a little easier than trying to guess with the circle. All right. Pop into a new layer. We get the pieces that we want, borrowing the same colors that are already there. <clears throat> Once again, back into the smudge tool. Same idea here. A little more pressure, and I need a bigger brush. The image size is a bit bigger in this case. Sometimes it'll stall a little bit trying to put you back. Because if it's a really high res image, <laughs> it has to think backwards a bit on top of everything else with this tool. So, ah, man. Loosen up that wrist. Maybe it's just time for me to get one of those pens. Alright, well, I'm going to focus less on perfection here and getting through the concept here for the benefit of getting the concept across. Alright, so not a perfect uh, picture here, but workable for the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's not the best son I've ever driven, ever drawn, but it'll see. Alright. Go back into curves here, try to get out of it what we want. Again, it's a larger quality image, so it's going to take a little more time to do what I'm asking it to do here. The other one was a lower quality shot. Okay. that one up. 
And same idea here. I'm going to set the direction over top for the star point here. Blow it out as far as we can. Now that I've got that working, I'm actually going to back off this a little bit. Actually, I don't even think I need that. Is the blur layer? Okay, this is the one. That's the one we want to back off a little bit. It just seems like it's a bit too much. So it's more in the background and it should be blurred. It's not the point of focus, so it shouldn't be that sharp. going to take the blur effect we've already made. I'm going to pull out a little bit here. After we've duplicated that. And same idea. it until I've got all the pieces of this that we're after. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, I've got a little cold going on, so my throat is kind of on the edge of things today, on the edge of something. <laughs> okay, good. So that should keep those all as one. some of the refinement of that okay and maybe as like a final touch here do one more draw out so they all get stretched a little bit we'll change the direction just to tighten them up a bit there Okay, so there we go, and that's not too bad. I mean, I would probably want to tighten it up a little bit because those rays, or those sun flares, are a bit, a bit sharp right now. But again, you can see in concept how we're just drawing and stretching this out, and kind of adding that surrealistic, uh, magical effect to it, which is really cool. So those are two uh, examples of working with what's already there, where we kind of drew on top of one borrowed the colors of another one. This is an idea where we're just gonna start from nothing here. And this will get a little odd. The sun is really about right over here. So we're gonna put the sun to kind of follow the light right about here. And you can see how that's not exactly going to work because there are shadows <laughs> on the street here. So take this idea as a conceptual one, meaning that we can put the sun in, but the shadows are not going to obey the laws. When you're going to draw in the sun when it's not already there, um, particularly when it's in a different spot, be aware that that is a concern and your picture will have, it'll either look wrong <laughs> or you have to make it just so that this, this becomes more like a magical image, more of like a concept, digital, imaginative piece, which can be really awesome if you use it right. Uh, that's why I'm going to show it to you in this context. but understand that that will happen <laughs> that if the sun wasn't there then the, the light always travels in a straight line so that's not going to obey the same rules obviously all right so we can start with really any color we want to here um, I'm gonna start actually by picking up a blue and then converting that into something yellow in that spectrum see where that takes me 
color palette out so you can see. So let me start that over again so you have the benefit of following my thought process. So I'm going to take the blue, deplete that so it becomes kind of like a greenish. I'm going to bring the red over into that spectrum. And then that gives me some play down here in the saturation as to how how yellow that should be. So I'm going to start with about there. We're going to drill in up here. I'm going to start on top of one of these clouds. So it blends in a little easier. Hold down our shift key, make a circle. Make sure we do this on a new layer. the selector tool. Um, it's the arrow selector tool. It's, it's actually called move selection. This allows you to take a previously set selection and adjust that as you would a shape, which is really cool. That's how I'm able to take my previous selection and then mess around with it a little bit. Okay, following the same rules that I use in the other one. Make that smaller. I'm just going to use a three color gradient. You could make more colors if you really wanted to probably would look more convincing. This is just an easy progression for me to follow for the sake of the tutorial. There we go. All right. So by now, I hope that you're thinking we're going to hop into smudge, because that was the same process for the other ones, if you're following along with what we're doing. All right. This brush is way too big for this. so. Sometimes if you try to zoom out while you're doing this, it kind of resets where you were, which is kind of annoying, but what can you do? I'm going to focus on the rays on this side because I know the building's right about here. I'm not going to go too crazy on that side. And that would be a little truer to the case because the building would be obfuscating the light that was there. If I can get this angle to work for me, it's kind of a sharp one. Might have to adjust my brush size. Yeah, I'm not really digging that one. Try again. There we go. Okay. Let's work with that. some blur now again to give it that aura okay and now we start doing the zoom blur effect and for that I'm gonna take a copy of top line This one, now this tool I believe comes out of the box, which is pretty cool, the zoom blur with the default installation. So that one you don't have to go fishing around for. That one's already there for you. Kind of done with the color palette. I'm gonna move that out of the way here. Double that up so it give it a little more body. Merge those two. Could even go one higher if I wanted to. Yeah. Doesn't quite have the full effect yet. Okay. 
I'm going to draw that out just a bit more. So we've got a lot of ground to cover. There we go. And I want to take the edge off the sun that I built there because it just feels... There we go. Take off some of the sharpness, and this is going to sound counterproductive, but what you can do is you take the sharpness away and then you put a little bit back. <laughs> and that actually ends up giving it the structure that you want. <laughs> just what happens. So we're going to take our sun rays here and finish this out. Shoot that over into the trees. Shoot that across the sky a bit here. There we go. Now what you could do again from this point is, let's see, take that one, okay, we want that, merge that in, that is the whole thing, good, okay. I'm going to take this. Let's see if we can tame this back just a little bit just for fun while we're doing this. Because again, it is behind this building. Or it is supposed to be. <laughs> That's the notion here. Okay, close enough for the moment. A little bit of wash on top. Okay. Starting to get to the place where we'd like. What you could also do with this is <clears throat> you could do some overlay color to buy into the sky a little bit. Let's duplicate that and I'm going to take away the other pieces here just for a minute. All that we have left is, maybe I don't need that really. A little bit of left over there. Do way really too much on that. Okay. everything over we just want to get the Sun so I'm going to select everything else in the layer and then invert the selection which is under edit so we get just that piece and I want to throw on some other color on there See if I can just give it a little something else. And we're going to change this layer to overlay so that it should mix in with that a bit. You can see some highlights now. Merge 
use those two together, blend them a little bit. And you can kind of see how it has a nice burn effect on the side of the building too, which is cool. Gives it just a little more realism to it. There we go. So again, this is absolutely not obeying the laws of light. We have shadows and things that would have to be dealt with if this were to be a complete process. This is just about how you can draw in the sun and the sun flare and add in some lens flare. I went over that before earlier in the video. So I really hope that gives you a good sense of how to do this and how to do it realistically because it looks cool. Uh, to get the full package again, you do have to worry about shadows. That is a consideration. It's a very annoying consideration, but it's a constant, unfortunately, that's going to make the picture look wrong unless you take it into account. So that's that. So thank you very much for joining in for this. That was interesting. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Had a good time demoing that off. Uh, from here, I would say and welcome you to come find me on uh, NateSorallo.com. I have connections out to all my social platforms from there, whether it's YouTube or Twitch if you're joining from me from there, or Mixer. Uh, I'm also on Twitter. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. Come follow me. Come say hi. Come give me some feedback. Let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if Paint.net is much more up your alley than the other concepts I've tried, because I want to make content that's of value to you. And, uh, yeah, even just uh, talk and say hello. That would be great. Give me a thumbs up if it was helpful. And, yes, come back. Enjoy. Have a great night and keep learning. Thank you very much.